Swings and misses at the off-speed delivery from Hendricks. Ted Lilly striking out the side. Kyle. Ted, Ted how are you, man? Good. Good, good winner. Great winner. Great winner. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Excited to go. You guys are going to be good. You've got some, some mm -hmm. depth. Yeah. Obviously, the talent's still there, so it'll be, uh, it'll be a lot sure. of fun. Yeah, I'm excited for our starting staff, you know, especially with what Darvish was able to do the second half last year. I'm really excited just to team up with him. So what are some of the things that you, you kind of, after last year, going into this year, you know, you're always, every year, looking to, you know, make adjustments as the league makes adjustments. And yeah. it's just what we do. So mm -hmm. what are the things that you felt like could help you mm -hmm. uh, make some a little bit of stride, yeah. you know, and, and keep up with what's the game, you know, how the game's changing? Mm -hmm. Pitching specific, I would say my curveball became a much bigger pitch for me last year, you know. And you worked on that in spring, and I, I remember yeah. coming out there quite a bit, and not only just the curveball and throwing it, but also being able to move it around the zone, mm -hmm. and then to follow your year and how you would use your breaking ball and um, different counts to different hitters and pitch backwards at times, and then mm -hmm. just having another pitch where you felt like you could throw it any time. Exactly, um, exactly. That's the evolution, right? So. Exactly, yep. Having another pitch just to have another thing in the hitter's head, you know, being a two-pitch guy is, real tough to do at that level, yeah. you know, with how good those hitters are, you know that. And uh, yeah, it was fun in spring talking about curveballs and stuff with you, because I mean, some guys can spin it and some guys can't, you know, and I, not that I can't, but it's kind of been a little tougher for me to develop that, yeah. that spin stuff and learning from you. I mean, you kind of, did you throw different types of curveballs? Um, I would, I would change shape. It didn't command it the way that you do. And so, you know, it's, it is only, you know, one pitch, I guess, but uh, the way you would use it, it mm -hmm. could act as a couple different pitches. I think repeating your mechanics is the biggest thing the, and the biggest stress for us, I guess, or the biggest challenge in a way, because yeah. um, it can be difficult. But yeah, I think that's my biggest focus, you know, throughout the off season when I start throwing is just repeatability. Because like you said, you want all your pitches to come out and look the same, everything be out of the same slot. And then all you're doing is a change in hand position. So yeah, when, once I kind of lock that in, um, then it's just finding that right spin, and mm -hmm. then you can manipulate it from there. Like you said, whether it's a get me over curveball or you pull down a little harder for a for a chase breaking ball. But yeah, if you're if you're not repeating your mechanics, then there's really no chance for you. Right, <laughs> right. right. Now it just there. it just looks good in the bullpen. Exactly. That's At it. times, not effective. Yeah. Right. Here comes the 0-2. Bishop swings and misses at the off-speed delivery from Hendricks. So this year, from a pitch standpoint, um, obviously. You know, you can sink it. Is there anything different that you intended intend to do? Yeah. So the two the two seems always been my bread and butter, kind of with the changeup, just playing those two off each other. But just noticing, you know, where the game's going. All these guys are trying to lift the ball, get it in the air. I've last year it started more for me, and it's probably going to carry over this year. But throwing more four seams, yeah, throwing more four seams, throwing more at the top of the zone, throwing more up and in on guys so they can't get extended. You know, uh, it used to be that two seam down and away sinking. You get guys roll over ground yeah. ball to short. You know now, now guys are going out and they're lifting that ball and putting it into right center. Right. You know, so it's just that adjustment of seeing what hitters are doing against you. You know, and how you combat that. So last year I did have some some success um, throwing four seams, just you know, right in on guys. Velocity didn't really matter. It was more just shape of the pitch. You know. Yeah, um, especially if they're in. cheating and they're mm -hmm. committed. They're committed to one one mm -hmm. location and exactly if they're starting to dive a little bit out over. You yeah. just put it right there for them. There's, you know, there's nothing they can do with that pitch. How did you approach um, like breaking down a lineup? You know, scouting reports, that kind of thing. Yeah, I would say, I, you know, I did get a little bit better at um, diving into information. Got better, but also a little more committed. Mm -hmm. I tried to look at numbers that were excessive, um, that really jumped out at me. Mm -hmm. but I think that's where we start as well. Yeah, you want to see the glaring numbers. And you see whether you know negative or positive, and that's kind of what you want to stay away from. And I think something like you said, you want to pitch to your strengths, but sometimes, like I think one of my strengths is pitching to a weakness, you know, of the hitter. And so just knowing who you are, I think, and and then when you start to look at a report and a scouting report, you know what to pull out of it for yourself. Right. You know, there can be so much information in there, like you said. These days, they break down everything, and they have all the numbers out there. So you have to. Really be careful not to get too much, you know, just to boil it down to still simplicity and what you need. Full count on him. Back comes Lilly. And a couple of strikeouts for Ted to start this ball game. When I went to Oakland, I would, you know, Zito had a really good curveball, and I asked him, and he would throw it off of this finger, and I'd never seen that before. Really? He would hook this finger inside the seam and, yep, and yep, pull yep. down. 
Have you, have you ever seen anyone throw a curveball no. like that? No. Yeah, not neither have I. Not and a good one. Yeah, oh, great one. So it's, great one. you know, it just, uh, again, it goes, you know, there's so many different ways to throw good breaking balls. And exactly. I asked, you know, Doc Gooden, who you remember, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, how, how he threw his four-seamer, and he, you know, right-handed, he, he held it like this with a yeah. horseshoe out the side. And I yeah. said, so how, okay, so how did you throw that nasty breaking ball? And so just like this, I just got on top of it. And really? Ripped it <laughs> down. Grip. Yeah. Jeez. So, wild. you know, so with really all the matter. Yeah, how you throw it. At the end it. of the day. Yeah, yeah. How you throw it. It's more just how you spin it, what the feel is like. Yeah. And where that slot is, yeah. Swing and a miss. He strikes out. Coming up in your minor league career, who were, you know, a couple of the influences that you, yeah. you know, that were older, big, you know, had some success in the big leagues that you, yeah. you kind of... Um, paid attention to. So in the minor leagues, I had a couple coaches that were really crucial to me. Um, Brad Holman was a pitching coach for me, and then Bruce Walton with the Cubs oh, yeah. with us. Yeah, he was awesome. They they taught me so much. Pap, he would he taught me about bat paths. You know, mixing the twos and the fours, all all that kind of stuff. But when I got to the big leagues, I would say some pitchers, Arietta, Jake Arietta, helped me a lot. Um, he helped me, you know, kind of cerebrally, just sitting on the bench, watching a big league game, just breaking down hitters paying attention to swings, even getting more in depth to reading swings, you know, and reactions from pitches, that kind of thing. But we would just sit on the bench together and just lock in, you know, on, on an at-bat or something and just talk through it. And it just got me in that mode, you know, that mindset of, okay, this is how you operate, you know, as a professional up at the highest level. And so I, I owe a lot to Jake, but you know, you, you have the way you pitch, you have your routines, but you can learn small details that you don't, you never really thought about, you know, and, and kind of makes the difference when you get out in a game sometimes. So what would you say when you were playing were some of the guys hardest outs for you? So when I, when I first got called up in New York, just throwing the ball well in the minor leagues at the time and, uh, and, and pitching pretty well in the game, and I faced Manny uh, first time, got him 0-2 with a heater and a changeup, and then threw another changeup that he fouled off, and then went for an elevated heater, executed that, and he still got inside the ball and drove it to center for a homer. Manny Ramirez, straight away center field, and the Red Sox take the lead. So, you know, at that time already, I'm thinking, okay, that that's not normal. Most guys will, you know, they'll foul it off, or, you know, worst case scenario, they fight it into center for a hit, mm -hmm. and he's driving it out of the yard. You know, thinking back to, like, this is a league where you, you know, you make mistakes, they don't have singles. Yep, exactly. You know? It's damage. Um, yeah. yeah. Yep. You execute and you still get beat on it, and you're like, what, uh, what did I do? For me, um, when I first came up, I had a similar experience kind of with Joey Votto. He was a tough out. I mean, he's been one of the best hitters in the game, but I kind of had a similar, I think I dropped in a first pitch curveball for a get me over strike. Then I think I was pounding him up and in, and I went to a, through a good changeup down and away, and he just stays right on it. And I'm like, after every, you know, everything I did, got him inside, all that, and stays on it, that was an eye-opener for me. When you face the guys that are super cerebral too, and just smart in the box there, think along with the at-bat, you can tell, you know, you can tell what they're doing and they're thinking along with you, and those are the most fun at-bats that I have. I look forward to going and facing him, and he's gotten me so many times, you know, but those are the fun ones where you, you have to lock in so, so hard, you know, to really try and get that guy out. He struck him out. I know you played a few places before you were brought to Chicago, but what were, do you notice anything? The differences playing in Wrigley Field? You know, one of the things that definitely, you know, stuck out even then and, and today was the fact that, you know, the, the fan base was behind the effort, um, behind the team. Uh, you know, you go out there and play hard, mm -hmm. you know, sh sh show, I, I think, the, the city and the, and the um, you know, our, our team that, uh, that we're willing to, uh, they're willing to really get after it and play hard. And mm -hmm. so this is, you know, one of the things that in my career makes this place a little more unique than others. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree. Um, yeah, I didn't have many other experiences in the big leagues, but just being thrust right into this when I got called up, I mean, it was so refreshing. Like you said, they're behind you no matter what. You know, I was lucky to have a little bit of success in the beginning, but came back for my second year and I definitely had some struggles. And you would have never thought anything was different. You know, talking to any of the fans, um, they are, they're such diehards, you know, and they just love being there. And we would go through rough stretches as a team. You still go out there and you look up and there's 40,000 people out there, yeah. you know? And I think Cubs fans are everywhere. They're supporting us everywhere we go. 
and I know it's a you know very very unique feeling and you don't get that many places if any other places at all. Hey Cubs fans, make sure you subscribe to our channel.